Welcome everyone to the Kirkwood School District Chemistry Unit Law of Conservation of Matter. Our objective today is students will be able to demonstrate and provide evidence that matter cannot be created or destroyed. This is known as the Law of Conservation of Mass. Now keeping this in mind that there are a lot of times that we can take this objective and just simply change the word you see here on the screen as matter. We can change that word to mass, we can change that word to energy, and it still is a scientific law. And by scientific law, we mean that in certain situations and in certain environments, this law holds up and holds true, and it's predictable. The law of conservation of mass was established in 1789 by a French chemist, Antoine Lavoisier. It states that mass is, neither, mass is neither created nor destroyed in any ordinary chemical reaction. More simply, the mass of a substance produced, or the products, by a chemical reaction is always equal to the mass of whatever you started with. Which sort of makes sense, that if you had one gram of carbon and five grams of sulfur, when you add them together, you're going to get six grams. Okay, That makes sense, but a lot of times in science, it's hard to predict and find out exactly where that product goes or where that item goes once it's created in a chemical reaction. So, for example, the law of conservation of matter says that if you have 70 grams before, even though you might have had a, a bang or a chemical reaction, when you are finished, you still have 70 kilograms. You still have that same amount of mass. You cannot ever have mass be created or destroyed. Here's a quick video. Check that out. The law of conservation of mass states that in a chemical change, matter is neither created nor destroyed. It is only rearranged. For example, let's place five zinc and five sulfur atoms onto the two sides of a pan balance. The two sides balance because the contents of each pan are identical. Consider the reaction of zinc with sulfur atoms on one side of the balance to form zinc sulfide. Five zinc atoms will react with five sulfur atoms with a tremendous release of energy to form five zinc sulfide molecules. The two sides still exactly balance. The total number of zinc and sulfur atoms on each side are still identical, demonstrating the law of conservation of mass. Great video. Here's a great image showing you exactly what that is. You've got the atoms of element X, the atoms of element Y. But when you react X and you react Y, you get compounds that are uh, composed of the same items and same amount when you started that you also end with. For example, when you have the creation of water, you have hydrogens or four hydrogens plus two oxygens making two molecules of H2O. Four H's for every two O's. It's got to balance out. Law of conservation of mass. If you react chemicals, if you notice over here on the left, you have calcium chloride solution and you've got sodium sulfate solution. When you react these two, you see you pour the glass and you have them react, you get a white precipitate, which is calcium sulfate and sodium chloride solution. So you've got this sort of white, murky looking water. But you'll notice that 300.23 grams is what you started with. Notice we capped the top of the bottle so nothing can escape. We still end up with 300.23 grams. Right? Here's a little video on the law of conservation of mass. So 
For example, when you react two chemicals together and you get some sort of gas given off, this set, lab setup shows you that if you can capture it with a balloon or if you capture it by the lid of a container, you'll ensure that no mass escapes, therefore showing the law of conservation of mass. When you have a chemical reaction, no mass or no matter or no energy can ever be created or destroyed. That's our goal. That's our video. Check this on your way out. Have a great day. Hi, it is I, Napoleon, the biggest bully in Europe, and I want to tell you about my cannons. No, you don't. You want to tell them about the law of conservation of matter. Conservation of matter. How can that be better than my cannons? Well, the law of conservation of matter states that matter cannot be created or destroyed. What does that have to do with my cannons? When you need cannonballs, where do you get them? From wagons. No little bully man, cannons come from iron, which <laughs> comes from iron ore, which comes from mines. Cannonballs cannot be made from nothing. They are matter. Well, when I shoot them, they disappear. No they do not, they go somewhere. Most of them end up in the ground where they stay forever. So cannonballs cannot be created or destroyed? We prefer to say matter cannot be created or destroyed. What about gunpowder? That goes away after I shoot my cannons. Not really. If you put five pounds of gunpowder in your cannon and fire it, what does it make? A big boom and a lot of smoke. How much smoke? A lot. Well, it actually makes five pounds. Five pounds of smoke. That smoke was created then. The smoke may have been, but the atoms were already in the gunpowder, so they were not. You are not saying that smoke is made from gunpowder atoms, are you? Actually I am. The atoms are just in different molecules. So it is atoms that cannot be created or destroyed. Yes, atoms are matter. Oh, matter cannot be created or destroyed. But my cannons to destroy things. No, they just rearrange the atoms. I love my cannons. You are a strange little tiny man.